Welcome everybody. I was just waiting that everybody has the chance to get in. Let we see. It seems that we have a stable number of attendees now. Okay, so welcome to the Biopsal webinar number 76. Today's presenter is Banyo Lundbori. He's from KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology, Stockholm. And he will speak about the Chromax 2024 and in particular to new feature and improvement. I'm Alessandra Villa and together with Otto Anderson, I'm hosting this uh, webinar for BioExcel. So during the webinar is a recorder, so just that you are aware of that. And during the webinar anytime, you can use the Q&A function to ask questions. So you will see this symbol, or this one at the bottom of the Zoom application, depends on which operating system are you using. And then you can click and type your question. Only not everybody will see your question, but we will see it. So at the end of the webinar, we will unmute you if you have a microphone. And so you can ask directly the question to Manus. Otherwise, we will. I will read the question for you. So it will be useful if you also give me the information if you don't have a microphone or if you don't want to speak anyway, or you cannot speak. That is also another option because I cannot see it. Uh, after the webinar, if you still have some question, in particular, maybe if we have a lot of questions that are not answered by Magnus, you are most welcome to ask them in the forum and Gromax has a dedicated forum under gromax.byxl.eu and uh, in particular under the category user discussion. So something about Manus. Manus is a researcher in Eric Linda's group and is currently leading the Gromax development. He's uh, involved in uh, Gromax development since 2012. Uh, 2012. Uh, and that moment is uh, just start as a postdoc in Eric Lindahl's lab. In the period between 2015 and 2023, so just last year, he was working for a company, Ergo Pharma, and he was in particular involved in calculate skin permeability. It was in molecular dynamics simulation. He has a master in pharmacy from Uppsala University, and he got his PhD in organic chemistry at Stockholm University in, uh, at the end of 2011. Sorry, 2011. Um, after that, he was a postdoc for one year at uh, the biochemistry department at the University of Cambridge. And then I think he moved to Stockholm again, and now he's currently working in Stockholm. Okay, so now we will see what he tell us about Gromax 2024. So I stop sharing and then Manus can share. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, welcome to this webinar. And as Alessandra said, I will present uh, new features in Chromax 2024, but I will also spend just a few minutes going through or recapping what uh, happened in the 2023 development. So first, starting, uh, what is Gromax? I think most of you already know this, but in case we have any listeners or viewers who haven't used Gromax yet, it is a molecular dynamic simulation package. So you could consider it a virtual microscope where you can follow um, atomistic movement over time uh, in detail. And we nowadays say that Gromax is user-driven regarding the development, that we try to follow uh, what users need and we try to implement that to the best of our ability and our resources. Gromax is considered performing very well in that it has a high speed and it scales well 
to large computers. You can use CPUs and GPUs in combination. And it runs on most platforms and hardware. So it's very flexible in that way. It also includes a suite of analysis tools that you can use to uh, an analyze your simulation results. And we also provide an extensive documentation and also then tutorials to help users use both the simulation options, but also the analysis tools. As I will go through a little bit more in detail today, there are also interfaces to other software, for example, to CP2K for QMMM simulations and also the new uh, Colovars uh, integration that was added in 2024. Gromax is free software, so you can use it without paying and you can modify it and you can redistribute it and do more or less whatever you want with it, as long as you acknowledge the original work. And these are some links that may be useful. So just a brief going through where you can find information about the software packages and its documentation. And also, as Alessandra mentioned, where the forums are located. If you are interested in the development or if there are any issues that you would like to report, then follow the last link here, the development link. So Gromax 2024 had its first release a little bit more than a month ago. And we have these yearly releases of Gromax. And then the first patch release where we fixed uh, some discovered issues was released um, last week. And we expect to have a next patch release in approximately two months. So what happened in this last release, in the 2024 release? So one of the main features is the integration of Colovars into Gromax. We also improved the accelerated weight histogram method, which is an enhanced sampling method with the possibility to automatically scale the target distribution. We also uh, had improvements to the deform option, and uh, now you can calculate shear viscosities using it. There are also a few things that were addressed. For example, now the artifacts that were um, present from missing Len Jones pair interactions during the course of a interaction list or the lifetime of an interaction list, now that has been reduced. And there were also performance improvements. And I will go through these features a little bit, but I will focus more on the Colvars and AWH improvements. And as I said, uh, the Colvars integration now means that you can use Colvars easily from Gromax just with MDP settings and a separate settings file. And Colvars enables the use of quite advanced or sophisticated collective variables for your sampling. And you can then apply restraints or biases to these. And that can be used also then for enhanced sampling, for example, using the adaptive biasing force method, method, which I will go through a little bit here. And just keep in mind that I'm just presenting Colvars here as an example. There will be a new, we're in the Colvars um, webinar in two weeks by the Colvars developers, which will go into more detail there. 
So this is just sort of from my perspective, my first impression or examples of what you can do. So to illustrate this, I will use an example that was published by Nora Aho and others from Cam Archive. So I have used their input data, so their coordinates and their MDP settings. And I have used these examples both for illustrating how to use colvars and also as examples to the improvements to the accelerated weight histogram method. So in this case, we are looking at the binding or un unbinding of benzamidine to trypsin. And it's in principle a fairly trivial setup in that much of the protein backbone is restrained and the, also the ligand is all only pulled in one dimension and is apart from that largely restrained. So in, in theory, it would be an efficient system for predicting the PMF for the potential amine force as you pull the ligand away from the binding protein. And to set up these colvar simulations, there are two options in the MDP file that I have been using. So you just say that you want to use colvars and then you specify the name of the colvar settings file. And in that file, you then specify the settings that you would like to use for your colvars. In this case, uh, enhanced sampling simulation. And these settings are should be taken with a grain of salt because I'm not a Colvars expert. I just looked at the Colvars documentation and tried to uh, make a rough translation of the AWH settings that were used in the uh, binding study that I started from, and then applied that in Colvars. So you specify your collective variable, you specify the range you want to study and what kind of uh, collective variable, in this case, a one-dimensional distance between two index groups. And then, then you say that you use the adaptive biasing force method for, the, for enhanced sampling. And I also specified upper and lower boundaries for my sampling here to prevent the ligand from too far away from the uh, range that I'm interested in. And then you get a PMF like this. And this is from a 100 nanosecond simulation of only one walker. So this is just an example of the output that you get. And I will then in a moment compare it or show output from AWH, but that doesn't mean that we should compare these because these this is only from one simulation. So it's just to show that this is the output I get from a very simple setup and the performance is comparable to AWH as well. But looking at this, one thing that you might be interested in is to see how much did I sample in different parts of this um, collective variable or the region that I've been pulling the uh, ligand from the protein. And you can directly get that from Colvars as well. So you can just in one of the output files, you can get the count in different parts of the sampling range. And in this case, we can see that the count is very unevenly distributed. I presume that if I had simulated longer, it would be more even. But still you see that in the higher values here, where you are mostly having the benzamidine in the water environment, we sample a lot more. 
whereas in the low distance ranges here, we sample very little. And now I will use this as a, an example how to uh, couple this to the accelerated weight histogram method. So from the AWH method in the output, you can get an estimation of the friction metric along the free energy landscape. And that would look using the same colvar sampling. And then in red, we have the inverted friction metric. So you could actually call it the diffusion metric from AWH. And you see that it's very noisy, but we also see that in regions where we have a high calculated diffusion from AWH, we also have lots of sampling or more sampling from colvars in general even if it doesn't follow exactly. If we would then instead print or plot the output of the AWH friction metric, so instead of taking the inverted friction metric, the, it would look like this. And this is one of the new features in AWH that you can use this uh, friction metric to scale the sampling or to scale the uh, target distribution so that you steer the uh, sampling to regions where the friction is high or the diffusion is low. So the regions that would be slow to sample get more, um, a higher bias to sample than more. And this is enabled as an MDP option that you just turn it on and say that, yes, I want to scale the metric or uh, the, the target distribution based on the friction metric from AWH. And then of course it is, the results of this will be very system dependent, but looking at the same simulations that we did before, just plotted here uh, more extensive simulations than I had from Colovars. So here I have the similar uh, output from five repeats using four walkers. So from the uh, Nora Aho um, setup. And then I did the same using this uh, scaling of the target distribution. And what we see here is that the standard deviation goes down in this case by a factor almost two and a half, which means that we have improved the sampling efficiency by a factor two and a half or five to six approximately. So by sampling more in the region where where the bi uh, binding takes place or where the, there is tight interaction, we have now improved the sampling efficiency significantly. And of course, this is just one example, but using the same setup still, but then plotting it with, in this case, I have four plots. The blue and the orange are using one walker, four repeats, and the red and the green are the same as I had in the last plot. And here we see the same trend. Since the I have fewer repeats with the first in the blue and the orange, I don't, there is no point in comparing them to the one with four walkers, but at least we can see the same trend that the standard deviation has now here gone down by a factor of three for the one walker simulations which in turn means approximately a speed up of a factor of nine. And we have seen these improvements from between a factor of two to a factor of 10 in different simulation setups, but there have also been cases where there is no uh, improvement at all. So it depends very much on the uh, friction metric across these uh, 
simulation or free energy landscape. There is one more option in AWH that was um, added as well. And that is the growth factor during the initial stage. So how quickly the histograms grow. That previously had a default value or hard-coded value actually that was set to three, but from 2024 now we can set it in the MDP file and the new default value is set to two. But if you use old TPR files, it will use the factor three that was used before. So the factor two means that the growth in the initial stage is a little bit more, well, careful. It doesn't grow quite as quickly anymore, which means that it might take a little bit longer to leave the initial stage. But on the other hand, there is a little bit less risk that uh, you have sampled it too quickly and perhaps got a little bit too high free energy barriers in parts of your uh, free energy landscape. There is also now, or there have been some improvements also to the, the forum option, which means that you can use the deform option for calculating clear viscosity properly now. So you deform the simulation box and you apply or generate the velocity profile that is uh, applied during the simulation. And this velocity profile or the flow field is uh, generated at the beginning of the simulation. And I will just show a few examples of how this can be used. So first I will just illustrate the actual deform option by pulling a system or deforming a system in the Z direction. And then I just use this init flow to set the velocity profile. So this is an example of a lipid barrier system. So from the corny layer in skin or the stratum corneum, where we have a very tight lipid barrier. And what I have done here is just that I have deformed the option in the Z, uh, box in the Z direction. And just looking at this, we only see that the box is extended, but we don't, it's a little bit difficult at first sight to see what effect this has. But if we show the periodic images of the box, we see that we have pulled the system apart in the Z direction. And that is quite natural that you will do after a while when you scale the box like this. What is a little bit interesting to see here is that, as you might expect, you pull it apart at the point or the interface where there is less tight interaction between the lipids. Whereas in the other interface, in the middle of the barrier system, there is more interaction between the lipids. They are interdigitated and there the connection is still retained. But this was just an example and doesn't really help you doing much new uh, science. To illustrate the actual uh, more interesting deform options, I've just shared the system using this uh, MDP setup. And then using the same system as before, if I share it, you first now see that the simulation box is tilted. And you also see then that the chains are getting uh, correspondingly tilted as well, or at least the tilt is no longer the same as it was before. So they are getting more straightened out where they were tilted in the other direction before. So you see that the system is getting 
feared here. And using examples then from Michele Pellegrino, who has been involved in this development, we can see that we can use it for calculating the shear viscosity. So here it's just a box of liquid that is sheared. And he has been using this for calculating the shear viscosity in different uh, solvents and solvent mixtures. And what is interesting to see here is that using this method, it gets a very small uh, or in general, very small error bars from 100 nanoseconds of simulation. And he calculates the shear viscosity using the Einstein formula now in the GMX energy tool. And he, uh, his development has also improved the efficiency of that uh, uh, shear viscosity calculation to make it quicker. As I said, other improvements that we have seen, or one or the other, is that um, previously there were reports of pressure drift during um, interaction pair lists. And now you can set how large you allow this uh, pressure drift to be. And this bug or issue only affected systems without uh, Coulomb interactions. So for example, some coarse grain systems would be affected by this. And with this um, uh, reduction of the artifacts, so the new improvements in 2024, there might be a slight performance loss for these coarse grain systems in order to avoid this uh, pressure drift. So you might see a little bit of slowdown here if you're running coarse grain systems. To recap a little bit on the performance improvements that have happened already during the uh, in the 2023 release, we had major uh, improvements or in the uh, sickle GPU. Uh, features. So now Sickle is working on uh, most, or as far as I know, all important HPC platforms. One example is uh, Lumi in Finland, where we use or where Sickle is used by default. Another feature that was introduced in 2023 was the CUDA graphs. And uh, that means that you can record the uh, GPU activities during one simulation step. And then you can reuse the same sort of the, uh, mapping during the following steps so that you already know exactly how the calculations will be uh, done so that you don't have to uh, launch the kernels in the same way. So it's more efficient in that way. This was enabled using a separate environment variable. I must admit, I don't know if it's enabled in any other way in 2024. I think it's still using the environment variable. So it's a little bit experimental still. But it can speed up your calculations if you are using could add GPUs. You can also uh, decompose PME or, or divide PME calculations over multiple GPUs nowadays. And also 
updates and constraints are run on GPU by default since 2023. And that, of course, only applies as long as your simulation settings uh, are compatible with uh, running on uh, running updates on GPU. There were also some modifications on the default uh, coupling intervals on thermostats and barostats, which uh, has improved the performance slightly. And for 2024, there have also been performance improvements. Uh, there have been continued uh, cycle improvements, but of the new features, what you might see is that you can now uh, use the mass repartitioning function from uh, GrowMPP so that you, when you run your simulations, you can always scale your hydrogen masses and uh, shift that mass to its connecting heavy atom. And this means that you can, since that will affect the uh, bond vibrations, you can uh, now, in most cases, if you set the mass repartition factor to three, you can often scale your time steps by a factor of two. But this is system dependent and it will sometimes not uh, make that large improvement. This has previously been available in uh, PDB to GMX, but especially if you are using systems where you might, well, if you have, for example, ligands or other uh, groups that uh, are not treated by the PDB to GMX, now you can instead just do all of it from uh, Grow MPP instead, which simplifies things. There are also in the 2024 release, there are more options for how to uh, use the multi multiple GPUs for uh, PME calculations. So you can now specify those settings using environment variables which means that you can often tailor this better to your hardware. And I presume also that you can tailor it to your specific systems a little bit more efficiently. And importantly, I want to thank everyone who has been involved in the uh, 2024 release. And of course, this would not have been possible without all developers involved in uh, previous releases either, but these are the ones that have been involved in this one. So thanks to all of these people. It would also not have been, uh, been possible without uh, funding. And these are the main funding sources or external um, contributors. So we have dedicated development from NVIDIA, or uh, sorry, we have dedicated development from Intel, and we have developers at NVIDIA who have been helping us significantly, but they are not dedicated to the Gromax project. And more recently, we also have a developer from uh, AMD who is working for us, but that did not make uh, or did not fund the development in the 2024 release, but we will see that in upcoming releases. And that is where I will end this and leave this to the questions and answers. I hope you have lots of questions regarding this and for, for new features. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magnus. So we have, uh, we, I will start with question from, uh, and we have a question from Pedro. So I will try to unmute Pedro. Mm. 
just give me a moment. Oh, I make okay. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Peter, please. Yeah, yes, uh, it's a uh, just uh, uh, a question is call call bars uh, in your implementation faster than uh, for instance plumet. I haven't compared them, so I don't know. Uh, I would think that it is probably faster, but um, uh, I won't promise anything. Okay. And that, uh, uh, going to another question, is is a ABF method uh, supported in Gromax? And uh, not uh, without call bars. Okay. Yes. But with call bars, it's as I showed here, it was very easy to, for me to set up, and I hadn't used it before. Mm -hmm. And I presume that there will be more information about the adaptive biasing force or ABF method, and also many other Colvars features in the Colvars webinar in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, my last question is uh, if the, there is any update on the fast multiple method that uh, is being developed by uh, by a group in Germany. Uh, I would say both yes and no. Um, so there is on ongoing development of the fast multiple method. Also, well, as you say, there is one group in Germany doing development. And there is also development from the core Gromax team in collaboration with one group in Japan. So there are two separate uh, implementations that are being developed. And at least the plan is to include the uh, variant or alternative that has been developed together with the group in Japan in hopefully in the 2025 release. That's the plan at least. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. So now we go to Johan. Johan, I don't know exactly, sorry if I pronounce wrong, I will allow you to talk. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I wanted to ask if it's uh, possible to develop our own CVs uh, with, uh, with call bars. And the reason I'm asking that, and this may answer Pedro's first question, is that using Plume, you need uh, atom coordinates on the CPU. So if you use Plume with Gromax, you've got to run updates and, and constraints on the CPU. So obviously it's it's lower. So is it possible and how easy or straightforward to uh, implement our own custom CVs uh, using call bars? I must say that you, the call bars uh, developers would probably be better at uh, answering this, but at least my impression is that call bars gives you a very flexible interface for designing and setting up your collective variables. Without knowing your exact needs, I cannot say if it will cover exactly what you are doing in Plumed or Plumed, but I think if you have a look at the call bars manual, you will hopefully have good examples there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now there is Laila. I will allow you to talk. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. So um, I have a quick question about the deform part. Mm, can you please talk a little bit more about that area? And then is there any tutorial that we can follow and learn? Um, or is there any template MDB file for the deform option? So in this case, um, there is no, as far as I know, at least uh, no tutorial. So we, the uh, deform option is, um, uh, it has been around for a while, but it has been now improved that you don't actually move 
uh, the atoms when you deform the system, but you instead apply or use a velocity profile. But for example, this is the only input I, or the only deform relevant input I used to shear the system like this. Um, so like um, if I want to repeat the same thing, I'll use the same MDP file okay. and add these two lines so I can um, somehow make the next slide you made, right? Yes, exactly. And what you might need is to adjust this uh, 0 0.001 value to make it deform as in the speed that you want. And uh, my last question is, is there any limitations for the speed? Uh, like here you're putting 0 0.001. Like, is there any limitations on the range that we can put here? I think it will depend on your system. If you shear it very fast, I think you might see artifacts. So I would say that now I don't know the exact numbers, but I think this is uh, in nanometers per picosecond. Yes. So already this these values are quite high. But I just used them for to generate quick examples here to illustrate what the deformed system looks like. And I mainly included this example because the uh, pure fluid examples make it very diff difficult to see what has actually happened. If we just look at this picture, we can't really see that much has happened to the uh, simulation box, except that the um, periodic box has been sheared, but we don't see any movements of the uh, liquid as such. Understood. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, so I have uh, one add question to Laila, so I want just to point out one. Will come a tutorial. I don't can tell you exactly when, but we, there will be a tutorial on the formation of Orgromax. I will guess uh, not uh, maybe in uh, in a couple of months. I hope, just for your information. Thank you. Thank you. So now the next speaker is uh, uh, Shuagan. But before I want to just to point that please the Colvar question. If you could put in the forum, so I just have online, there is also following the webinar is also Fiorin that he will speak in two weeks and he asked if kindly, you can put in the Gromax forum, I will put the link to the Gromax forum in, uh, in the chat. And then if you can type there your questions, so people, Colbert people can answer there. Thank you very much, Giacomo, for pointing out. Uh, so then we go further. I will say next speak, uh, next. I try to unmute. Sorry, that I have to find it. Um, Shu Yang Wang, please, if you can, you can speak now. Mm. No, I think he cannot. Uh, hi. Ah, um, please go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, for my understanding, Gromax does not currently support GPU acceleration for stochastic dynamic integrator. Is there any plan or likelihood that this capability will be introduced in the future? Yes, there is a plan uh, to introduce that in the 2025 versions. There is an ongoing effort. And if you are very experimental, it might actually be possible to test it. But I would recommend to wait a little bit. But uh, the plan is definitely to have it in uh, 2025 release. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, because uh, that's very important for the free energy calculation, yeah. Yes, exactly, I know. I've been uh, seeing um, that personally as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, then last question is, uh, you know, uh, now the Gromax can uh, use a plumed to uh, perform lots of the uh, acceleration uh, uh, enhanced sampling. 
uh, like meta dynamics. So what's the biggest uh, difference between the uh, plumed and uh, clovers? Um, yeah. I should leave that to the uh, plumed and clovers experts, but uh, I would say that they have there are overlaps between uh, colvars and plumed, but the main important feature now that uh, colvars has been more tightly integrated in Gromax that you can uh, that you don't have to patch the Gromax code to use colvars, but uh, you use colvars from uh, the native uh, interface in Gromax. I haven't tested. Um, or made any speed comparisons, but I expect that it will make it more efficient than uh, using uh, separate uh, library and uh, with a patched version. Okay, okay. Plans, Thank should... you. Thank you very much. So I will ask if you can kindly for Colvar's question, just refer to the forum, uh, because I think it's more appropriate or not to the next webinar. Okay. Thank you very much. So now we go further with the following question for Remy. I will allow you to talk. I think he has some, ah, oh no, I cannot hold, sorry. With the deformation option from the MDP, how should we then extract the viscosity similar to NAMD simulation? So you can uh, analyze it using the um, GMX energy tool. And then there is, I think there are actually two options to calculate the shear, shear viscosity. And the recommended one is using the uh, Einstein uh, formula. And with that, you don't have to write the output very often, but you need to at least uh, do the energy calculations frequently enough, at least, to capture these uh, motions. OK, thank you very much. So then we have uh, Fatme, oh, sorry, Fatme Yul. I try to unmute you if you can speak and then you can. Yeah, you can speak. We hear you. No. No. Nope. Okay. We just got a background noise. So the question is Is it possible to calculate the viscosity of aqueous system contain aggregate, containing aggregating aggregates? Do you hear me now? Oh, yes, yeah. now it's we hear. Ah, okay, yeah, no. this, is, this is my question. So because your example is for some homogeneous system, so yeah. what will be happen if we have aqueous solution containing aggregates with other molecules? Is it possible to use the same uh, approach to calculate the viscosity? I think if you have a more complex systems, so in these cases, we also have mixtures, but... Uh, so heterogeneous, but still simple mixtures. If you, for example, would have more complex setups, if you would have, let's say, a protein in there or something, I think you would have more difficulties calculating the shear viscosity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And we have a following up question, as also on viscosity that I will read. From Mattia. So he would like to ask if well, where we could find more information on the details of the calculation of the viscosity using the cell deformation feature. Maybe it was mentioned during the presentation, but it didn't catch the information. Thank you. Yes. If I can step in, sorry, yeah. Manus, yeah. there will be also a tutorial on this soon. Please go ahead. Yes, so I would refer firstly to the uh, 2024 release notes where you can find a little bit more information on what has been changed. 
but then I would uh, uh, recommend you to read the manual, the Gromax manual, where there is more detail about uh, calculating shear, shear viscosity, and also how these options work. So I hope Thank that answered your question. Thank you. So, Han, now we see if, uh, sometimes you can, could you, I am mute you, could you state your question? No. Uh, so, his question, her question is, uh, is a non-discriminate CV possible? such as the distance from an atom A or an atom B to an atom C falling with the center range at a given time? I don't know. That's my answer. Uh, I would recommend you to ans ask that in the Colvars session in two weeks. Uh, it's not uh, possible in Gromax with, without Colvars or possibly plumed. Okay, thank you. So now we have uh, Nora. Uh, Nora, I will try to unmute you if I found you, sorry. Please, Nora, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so, yes. uh, Magnus, I actually, I was surprised that when I saw my name, so thanks for using our system as an example. Yeah, thanks for the good reference data there. <laughs> yeah, so my question would be that I don't know um, too much of this new feature of the AVH that, that you mentioned, but would yeah. this feature of scaling the target distribution now be a good option as a default? Or is there some examples when it would be useful or could fail or so? Just to get an idea if, if from now on that would be something to turn on. I think in general, it would be a good idea, but we want to be careful with turning it on as default. We have seen cases where you can get self-reinforcement uh, of uh, the uh, target distribution, because often you see that when you sample in a region more, you will get a slightly higher uh, friction metric because it's um, um based on the uh, autocorrelation function and the longer sampling there could lead to higher friction metric which means that you could you could in theory get an increased uh, target distribution in regions where you sample more so you might want to be a little bit careful with that and i should also add that you shouldn't expect any uh, x or uh, any magic from this. Uh, the scaling by default, or the scaling by this option, only takes place after leaving the initial stage where you have had enough sampling to get a reasonably reliable um, friction coefficient. What you can do instead is also that if you have a friction coefficient that you trust, you can also use that as a user input to a simulation. But in general, I would recommend experimenting with this at least, especially if you have large differences in your uh, estimated friction metric from AWH. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, that already um, is helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I will go to Abhishek, that he has a performance question. Mm. It's not anymore online. I cannot see him anymore online. Okay, I asked the question, how much adding a simple center of mass restraint with Colvar will affect the speed? Um. Here, I don't know exactly either, but I would say very little. That's my impression. So using AWH with the native uh, Gromax pooling uh, uh, compared to using Colvars with a, a similar setup, I didn't 
see any difference in performance on my uh, local system here. Okay, so we have also another question from Khan. Will update on the GPU using Verbert integration and the VV option also become available in the foreseeable future? I guess foreseeable future, I interpret like within one year. Yes, there are currently no concrete plans for the um, MD Velocity Verlay integrator on a GPU. So I can't say anything for sure there. Yes, and he has also, thank you. He has also another question. I've been struggling with the protonation of NH3 plus without specifically choosing which hydrogen to force away from the nitrogen using plumbed. Can Colvar perform this better? I guess this is also a question for the forum. Yeah, I think either the forum or the webinar in uh, two weeks. Yeah, so then we have, uh, I will take the last question from uh, Umash Kara. I will see if he's still online. Yes, I try to unmute him. We'll see if he can speak. Oh no, sorry, told that the microphone is not uh, working. So how much precise the H atom weight transfer in, in case of membrane structure? I guess this verb missing here. Yeah. I guess is how much is precise the H atom weight transfer in the case of membrane structures. I guess, that is my guess. Yeah, I'm still not quite sure that I understand what is being asked here, but uh, in general, transferring mass from the heavy atom to uh, hydrogens will not have a large effect on, on the sampling unless you are really studying uh, details about, uh, well, rotational degrees of freedom, I would say. But there might be other situations as well, but... But in general, it's safe to transfer the hydrogen mass or mass to the hydrogens. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to, for all the questions. Thank you yes. very much for uh, Magnus for presenting Gromax. And now I would like to, if you just give me the control. Yes. I will just present uh, the next webinar. So I just put it already in, uh, in the chat, but uh, mm, so the next webinar will be in two weeks. I put in the chat the link so that you can enroll. And it will be on uh, an unsampling collective variable use space using the Colvars library in Gromax. And then we will have three speakers, Giacomo Fiorin, Humbert Santos, and Jerome Enin. And it will be the 19th of March, 2024, at the same time, 15. And here I see that is, I think it will be not yet summertime. It will be still winter time. But uh, yeah, so, but at three o'clock, European Central Time. Okay, thank you very much for being with us and uh, see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.